Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. So today's video is going to be going over oil paint mediums and solvents. And I have quite a range of these to discuss. So I'm gonna be trying to do it in the most simplified manner that I can. So whether or not you're familiar with oil paint mediums, Hopefully by the end of this video, you will gain some value from it. We'll be discussing what they're used for and also how to do so safely and properly because in my book, that's the most important thing. I wanna make sure that we're all being safe when it comes to using these materials. From my experience, oil paint mediums seem to be the one thing that really turns people off from ever wanting to even try oil painting. And I understand it, um, even myself when I began experimenting with oil painting. I was a little bit hesitant to start using different mediums after seeing the health hazards on these bottles. It can be a little bit scary if you don't know what you're doing, so I get it. I'm hoping that after this video, it's not gonna be so intimidating for you guys because honestly, mediums are great. And when you learn to use these mediums as intended, you really broaden the opportunities and different effects that you can achieve with them that will really enhance your artwork. So to start, let me explain what solvents and mediums are. Solvents come in many different names. If you've heard of turpentine, turpenoid, terps, um, ecosol, spike oil, mineral spirits, gamsol. I mean, honestly, the list really does go on, but those are all examples of solvents. So solvents are basically used in the same way that you would use water for different art mediums like acrylics and watercolor. However, since oil paints are not water soluble, that's where solvent comes into play. So solvent is used to not only clean your paintbrushes, but it's also there to dilute your oil paint color and make it thinner and more workable. Now mediums on the other hand are basically here just to enhance your overall experience with oil painting. They are substances that when added to your oil paint will change the property in some way or another. So mediums can be used to change the flow of your oil paint, make your layers transparent so they're sort of see-through for glazing. They affect the drying time of your paints by either speeding it up or slowing it down. And they can add to the body of your oil paints by creating more texture. So you can get really thick imposto textures or you can get um, more of like an enamel-like surface or a glossier surface. It can really do a lot of stuff. It's cool. So I'll be touching on just some of the oil paint mediums that I currently have and are using because if I went over every single one of them, this video could honestly go on all day and I don't think anyone has time for that. <laughs> but before we get into these mediums and the different ways in which they can be used, there is one rule that we must follow to ensure our success in the studio when it comes to oil painting. And that is the fat over lean rule. So to put this simply, most oil paintings are produced in layers. And the first layer is a basic outline or underpainting using mostly your solvent and a little bit of paint. Um, if you wanna see a more in-depth video that goes into explaining underpainting, I just made a video on that and I'll make sure to leave it at the end of this one so you can click over and watch that. Okay, so following that, you go into your blocking in phase. I like to call it the blocking in layer. In this layer, the artist will block in the main areas with various base colors. And this is traditionally the second layer that gets put down when you're oil painting. And then following that layer will be your more detailed layers and that can range from, you know, three to however many layers <laughs> that you wanna add, honestly, depending on how detailed your painting is. So because your leanest layer of paint is going to dry faster than the rest of them, this is the layer that needs to get put down first. And then your fatter layers, which are more oily and have more medium in them, go on top of that thinner layer. The reason for this is that the lean layer, which has solvent and paint but very little oil content, will not only dry much faster than the layers that have more oil present, but it will also be less flexible and more prone to cracking. So this basically means that you must start with a very thin, lean layer of paint, and with each layer that follows, you're going to add more of your medium and a little bit less of your solvent to create those fatter layers. 
which in a sense is basically just the layers with more oil paint, more oil content in it that makes it an oilier, fattier layer. Because if you were to lay down a thick, really oily layer on the bottom, and then go in with a very thin, lean layer of paint on top. The thin layer is going to dry first, while the bottom layer is still curing and drying, which is going to cause your paints to crack, which is obviously something that we want to avoid, right? So now that you understand the basic rule of working thin to thick, let's go ahead and get into the different mediums and how they can be used. And keep in mind that all of these mediums that I'm about to discuss are compatible with one another, so you can mix and match them around, basically. And anytime I use these mediums, I like to use it in conjunction with my solvent as well, like Gamsol or Spike Oil. This one seems to be the one that I am reaching for most these days. I just love the lavender scent that it puts off. Um, but the reason for that is to add more fluidity to your mixture. by discussing Gal Kid. Now this is a great medium for beginner oil painters and one of my personal favorites, but Gal Kid is a Alkid resin medium. It's a high viscosity fluid medium with the consistency of a thicker fluid that increases the flow of the oil paint straight out of the tube. Galkid also thins oil colors and increases transparency and gloss. This medium will create an enamel-like surface and level visible brush strokes. Another huge benefit to Galkid is that it's one of Gamblin's fastest drying oil paint mediums. And this can be great for a lot of artists because oil paints do take a bit longer to dry. However, that's something that I value in oil paint, so it really just depends on how you like to work. So when I'm working with Gal Kid, I prefer to add 10 to 20% stand oil with this mixture along with the solvent, but you don't have to do that. You can just use the Gal Kid itself with the solvent and you'll have a great little mixture there for painting. Now here I'm just rinsing my paintbrush and solvent to clean off the excess paint and medium. Next we have Gal Kid Gel. Now I like to use this medium sparingly or mix it with equal amounts of Gamsol to create a traditional slow drying, low viscosity painting medium. Gal Kid Gel is a stiffer gel compared to Nia Magelp that hold thicker, sharper brush marks and dries more quickly. Galka Gel increases transparency of oil colors and creates an impasto texture. Moving into our solvent free gel, 
Solvent free gel, as the name says in itself, is a medium without any gamsol or solvent present. It supports a broad range of techniques with the least amount of compromise across color, drying time, texture, or mark making. Solvent free gel has a slightly higher oil content than Galka gel, so it will dry a little bit slower. Now on to solvent-free fluid. Solvent-free fluid will increase the gloss and should be used in moderation with oil colors no more than 25% by volume. In regards to its drying time, it's a moderately fast drying medium, meaning that thin layers will dry to the touch in approximately 36 to 48 hours. And this medium is also non-toxic, so big plus there. Safflower and poppy oil. Even though I don't have poppy oil here as an example, I'm going to be talking about both of these in the same context since they are pretty similar. These are paler oils and are particularly useful when mixing with white or lighter colors to avoid the yellowing associated with linseed oil. They also take a rather long time to dry. Safflower oil is made from the obvious safflower oil and alkyd resin. It is non-toxic and contains no petroleum distillates. Now stand oil is a thicker oil almost resembling the consistency of honey. Stand oil is thicker than linseed oil and it creates a tough paint film without the yellowing tendencies of refined linseed oil. Stand oil causes oil colors to flow out as they dry, minimizing brush strokes. It is an excellent painting and glazing medium and can be thinned with terpenoid or whichever solvent that you are working with.
Neoma Gelp is a soft and silky gel medium that doesn't exactly make the paint more fluid, rather it rounds out the brush marks. It is a perfect medium for thicker, transparent glazes. Neoma Gelp dries at a moderate rate and remains workable for hours. Linseed oil is one of the most well-known oil paint mediums. Of course, you can get into a range of these from purified linseed oil, refined linseed oil, linseed stand oil, thickened linseed oil, cold pressed linseed oil, drying linseed oil, and the list truly does go on. These differ slightly, but overall linseed oil is a slow drying medium. Linseed oil also makes for strong and flexible paint films. Walnut oil is another oil paint medium that is less likely to yellow as it dries. It also dries quicker than safflower and poppy oil, which is a big advantage for some painters. When walnut oil, along with many nut-based oils, are exposed to the air, it starts the drying process. So it is best to store these oils in a fridge or in a shaded area with the lid sealed tight. Cold wax medium is a particularly unique medium, being as it's one of the only ones that won't add gloss to your paints to some degree, as most mediums will. Cold wax is made from naturally unbleached beeswax mixed with gamsol to create a thick paste consistency. It sort of reminds me of the consistency of coconut oil when it's hard. This medium will make your paints thicker and more matted and it is very popular amongst abstract painters looking to add more texture and a contemporary matte finish to their artwork. Now, I also just wanna mention a few other little mediums that I don't have here on hand, but I figured it would be good to include real quick. Liquin, along with most alkyd mediums, will speed up the drying time. Used as an extender for oil and alkyd paint, they give a translucent effect. This means they also make for really nice glazes. They also provide bulk for the paint. They dry to a cracked resistant, flexible, tough, and virtually non-yellowing film that can be varnished in a normal way. Now there's also a brand called Zestit, which I've been looking more into lately, and I think it's something that I'm going to invest in because Zestit is an environmentally friendly solvent designed to overcome the shortcomings of turpentine and other mineral spirits that are flammable and toxic. They are derived from natural raw materials biodegradable, and don't require special storage or ventilation. These products are citrus scented and include a range of solvents and mediums that are sustainable. 
So I really hope this video helped you guys to better understand oil pain mediums and the ways in which they can be used. Please try not to be intimidated or scared of experimenting with mediums. They are so much fun to work with and honestly provide you with endless possibilities of ways to work with your oil paints. And I'm thinking about making a video sort of demonstrating, I should probably let this plant go by. I'm thinking I'm gonna make a video demonstrating how to build layers because as long as you follow that fat over lean or thin to thick rule and you work in a well ventilated area, always make sure to have some windows open and a fan running to kind of keep the air circulating. But if you're doing those two things, you're gonna be more than okay oil painting with different mediums and solvents. Yeah, if you're somebody who's new to oil painting, I really encourage you to go out there and get yourself some solvent. Gamsol is like the very traditional one. Um, they use it in most art studios. It's, it's very safe compared to like turpentine and um, other solvents. As I discussed, there's a ton of them. Um, but yeah, go out and get yourself some solvent and grab a medium from one of the ones that we discussed earlier. I would recommend starting with Gal Kid. Um, this one's probably my favorite to use. And just play around with it. Start to familiarize yourself with the different mediums and their properties and the fun things that you can do with it. And that's just something else that's going to level up your artwork. So yeah, I think that's all I've got today. I hope you guys have an amazing week and thank you so much for being here with me it truly means a lot <laughs> it means so much so um thank you i hope to see you guys in the next video bye